Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of my dev blog where I'm talking about the current state of Reload the Wisp. Um, today we um, basically I didn't make any progress because we, we have Christmas and everything and I didn't work as much. So um, what I decided to do instead of giving you a status update which basically is non-existent or at least almost um, I will talk about a little bit how I'm handling um, some coding aspects and we'll go to this. So this time around we will go into code, so just as an, um, whatever, spoiler, or not spoiler, as a warning, I guess. Just as a warning, um, you, if you're not interested in this kind of stuff, you probably this episode isn't for you. We will return to um, more visual stuff, or also even more game design from time to time, but today I thought let's focus a little bit on coding. How am I doing things? Like I said before, I'm not an expert, so um, take it as you may, like, it, you, your, <laughs> everything your experience might be very different than mine, but that's how I will, ha uh, how, how I'm handling things, and I'm currently pretty happy about all that. So, we have here the default level, which should actually not look like this anyway, but we have the default level with a very small level here, like, if it's, oh, it's bugging again, whatever. Um, it's not really important for what we're going to do today because we're going to look inside the code. So um, I hinted at it last week already. Um, basically what I do to... Um, so Unity, first of all, Unity is an um, entity compo component system. So um, this is not object-oriented oriented what I'm doing here. Like there, there is a little bit of stuff like that inside, but most of the stuff is not really... Or it's a little bit different. I don't know. Like, but I I really had um, huge problems when I started to work in Unity because I was coming out of a really object-oriented programming world, and um, getting used to working in Unity was really difficult for me at first. But now I think I got the hang of it. Like, I'm still having some problems here and there, but overall it's fine. So what am I doing? Well, let's see. Let's take dying for example. Um, Basically, I'm splitting up. Um, I'm splitting up every everything as much as I can. I don't know how else to say it. Like, let's put it very simple. Like, I have a stat called health. Like, I don't have a script called player where I track all the player stats or even just player stats. I have one um, com uh, mono behavior for each stat basically. So this mono behavior is health, and all it does is you can get the health, and you have a um, you have a um, um, event. Here's the event. You can subscribe to, and it will notify you when the health changed. That's all it does. There's nothing else. There's no code um, when to change it. It's just the current status. The only thing else it's doing on awake, it's setting the current life to the max life, which is correct in my case now. It may be different then maybe you either need more scripts or anyway. But for me right now, when I start a level, I'm always at max life. So this one is fine. So, okay, that's what health is doing. So to set the health, I basically have a, another script, which is, oh, it's even open here. It's called deal damage. Deal damage, all deal damage is doing is, it takes the um, health, and reduces it by a certain amount. And the amount is public. I don't know if you are familiar with how it works in Unity, but if we go... Where is it here? It should be in... Uh, no, I don't know. It's not in dying. It's not supposed to be in dying. World Collision. Yeah, World Collision. Deal damage here, see? So I set the amount to 1. My life is, by the way, also at 1. If you go to stats back here, here. My max life is 1. So... Um, world collision will deal one damage to me. So once again, all this does is it subtracts the amount which I can set in the Unity um, editor um, from my health and nothing more, like no dying, no nothing. In addition to that, I call this an action. Like I, I, I am, um, I'm using it as an interface more or less, but um, because. Unity is not really able to work inside the editor with interfaces. Um, it's an abstract class. 
but I'm using it as an interface. That's why I have the I before the to show to me, by the way. This is an interface, which by, is already a lie because of the stop. But I actually don't think I ever implemented it right. Uh, yeah, by I trigger. Like, this was just a, an idea I added later. So it's no longer an interface, but the idea is still the same. You, you Usually you will just, let's ignore this line for now, because this is a little bit more advanced. And like I said, I, I'm not using it only in the in the triggers. And I don't think I ever use the stop actions, so I'm fine there, I think. But I can explain later what this does. Um, so um, basically, I'm defining, like, if you are familiar with an interface, if not, I I can explain to you, like, like you have to have some some knowledge about programming, otherwise you will go nuts in this um, in this dev vlog today. But basically, this is just a contract saying. Everything that is derived, now we are back in object-oriented stuff, from this needs to implement an execute method. If I go here to implementation, this is, by the way, ReSharper. Don't, don't try to find it. If you don't have it, you cannot use it. You see, like, there's a lot of um, actions I have, and all of them have their own implementation of this execute method. So if we go back to deal damage, this is marking that... Um, it is overwriting the, the from the derived um, from the or the parent whatever um, type, and the execute all it does is what we had before. Um, the current life um, is subtracted by the amount, but you can do anything else here as well. Like if we go to another implementation, um, let's go back, go to implementation, whatever. Um, let's say. Uh, what's easy? Quit. Application quit. That's an easy one. <laughs> so, um, this all it's doing is just closing the game. So, the idea here is that I can use these um, these actions in multiple, um, in multiple ways. Like, for example, the deal damage, what we have in the game here, is... Um, triggered, and now we come to the second part, from the on collision. The on collision, it's only, there's some other stuff, but basically, if I collide with something, I will execute this. What this means is, I, first of all, on collision can have any number of um, actions attached to it. Like if we get, get to something a little bit more complex, like dying, you will see here, dying will, um, will trigger a lot of stuff one after another, this will be executed from top to bottom, like element zero first and so, so on and so forth. So it's not important how this is triggered, but we will come le um, come to this later. But um, so the first great thing is because I have an abstract class, all, I, all I'm saying in code, then in the on collision, let's go to the on collision code. You see, it's most of the stuff is really easy. So I think you will be... Um, once you understand the concept, it's not a lot of coding. So on collision, on collision is all it does is it's calling execute actions. I should do it like this. I have still some problems with um, with layering in particular collisions, but that's for now you can ignore that. That there's no layer check. Here's the layer check, and here's also in debug logging stuff, but the layer check isn't done here. Anyway, um, so basically. Um, these ex execute actions is um, part of the trigger abstract class. I, I shouldn't call these I anymore. At the beginning, I was always using them as interfaces, but now I'm using them more as abstract classes. This is not even an abstract class, so whatever. I don't know what what I was thinking there. That's actually really bad. Anyway, um, I will rename this later. I will just try to comment here to do rename the I stuff. It's not correct. Yeah. Um, so I have an execute and a stop actions. So all it does is calling the execute and calling the stop on the actions themselves. You saw that every action needs to have uh, um, execute and the stop. So let's go back in here. You see it needs to have an execute and the normal stop is doing nothing. 
if it's implemented, it will do something, but that depends on the action um, we have. Um, <coughs> so we have these execute actions here, which is just going over the list of actions we have here and calling the execute method. The execute method can be any anything, basically. It can um, deal damage, it can quit the application, it can whatever, disable the mono behavior, whatever you need, it can basically do. The only um, restriction you have is that the action itself needs to know everything itself. So at least that's how I'm handling it. I don't know. There might be different approaches. But um, so if we look here in some more advanced stuff, let's see, load level is too easy, right? Go up. What's going on here? Play audio clip. Disable. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's go disable. Eh, let's do this. Basically, um, this action, what it needs is it needs to know if it should set the rigid body to kinematic, if it's true or false. So the reason is to to set it to true. You um, so basically you you may want both cases. Sometimes you want to set it to kinematic, and sometimes you want to disable the kin kinematic setting. And you need to know which rig rigid body we are talking about. So. There are different approaches for this. Like basically, you could say like you are always in a certain hierarchy, and so you can say, well, I'm always getting the rigid body from the parent because I'm always below this. What I decided to do is, well, what I usually do is, um, I will usually have, if we open this, um, I will usually have a public um, variable. This is just because of Unity Inspector stuff. I usually would do a property, but I decided to use public variables in Unity doesn't make a lot of sense in Unity to use properties because like you can cheat stuff that it's still you can still see the private fields and then you can still use properties for public access but the entire point of a property would be to restrict access so that um, nobody can um, get uh, or do something when it's, it's accessed but the inspector itself will not and run the property itself. It will just set the variable. So it's kind of self-defeating. And I, I didn't, I don't really understand um, why I should do it. So I'm always just doing it like this. Anyway, like you might disagree on this. And the same is um, for is kinematic. This is kind of an easy example still. If we get to a little bit more complicated stuff like boosting, maybe where is the, where is the, like I just split it all this up for you so it's easier to see. I, the input is to boost. So boosting has a fourth multiplicator, the time offset when it should end, and the rigid body, which is still kind of easy. But like you, you get, I think you get the idea. Like you, you need to have all the inputs that are um, that are needed for you here. Um, for example, the boost is kind of breaking this a little bit. So if we go into the boost, like I, I know it's not. I'm, I'm breaking it basically here because this, this is just a trigger. Oh, this is a trigger, not an action. See, so that's bullshit. So the boost trigger is fine, and uh, yeah, but it's not like it's not really a trigger. Like this is already a mixer. This is not really a. This is like like a bad example. Like I'm breaking it here because I, I had some problems with. Um, how to get the um, the stick direction um, through the rigid body and to the boost, but like it's it's solvable. I need to clean this up as well. Like still in development. I'm really sorry. That was a really bad example. Um, let's go over whatever. I don't know. Like okay. Anyway, so what I was trying to say is like you need to have all the all the variables that might change dynamically or anything need to be another script or another stat or another anything so you can always reference them. And there are multiple ways to reference in Unity. You can use the get component, which I'm using sometimes if I, basically I'm only using it if I have dynamically instantiated um, objects that um, want to have objects um, other objects than themselves that are in scene. So let's say, let's say I would have an enemy in here, and the enemy 
will need the health of the player. So I cannot, um, if I spawn the enemies dynamically, I, I cannot give them direct access um, to the player. At least that's how it, it doesn't work in Unity that way. So what I would need to do is I will need to um, search for the game um, for the um, for the health object which is beneath the player or something like that or like maybe using a tag for this to search for and then getting the health component like there are a lot of ways that you can what you can do um but i will need to get the basically the the health component of the player there another way would be to to check them to get the game object of the collision and then get the um, health component of that game object so that's usually how I would do it. I would say, like, I if I shoot something, I will have a raycast hit or, I don't know, like, just a collision. And then I will get a game object. And then I will check if the game object has a health component. If it has a health component, I will do my stuff. If not, I will not. So that would be another on-collision execution that will just check, give, give me the component. Does it have it? No, it doesn't have it. Then um, do nothing. If it does have it, invoke some action. Okay. So that's that. Um, when you can see it in action, is basically let's go back to dying to have a little bit more um, a little bit more complex e example where you also see like some of the problems I have with it. But um, like I said, it's it's not perfect, but I think it's really good for me right now. I might need to change it if it's getting too complicated. I I might need to change it, but like the most complicated behaviors here are this and. Um, is dying and loading the new level. Loading the new level is even a little bit more complicated, and that's why I will not go into this here. But I think this is a a decent size, um, a decent size behavior. Let's say it's like behavior overall. That's the dying behavior. So what happens on dying? Dying is an um, is a trigger, which means when is let's say when is um, dying triggering? Dying is triggering when the current life is lower than one how does it get um, notified of that it has a reference to the health component which we dragged in and we subscribe to the health change changed event as soon as the health change event is fired it will pass the current life the cur as soon as the current life is lower or equal to zero which by the way this we could also make a public variable and changeable but like currently i don't know like maybe you die when you have minus one whatever there are some games where you don't die when you are at zero but only when you are at minus one or maybe there are different stages of dying anyway so this dying component dies when you are at zero and it's not configurable like it's easy enough to change it anyway so and then it will execute all the actions that are attached to it so now we know when it happens what does happen when when our life goes below zero or equal to zero we will invoke an action. So this is basically a kind of a crooks. Like I, I would like to to be able to rename the component here, but I don't know how to do it. Like to have a different name here because that would make my life a lot, a lot better. But anyway, so currently I have like these invoke actions here, which what I probably should do is just. Yeah, that's actually a good a good way to do it. What I should do is I should um, put them all into game objects so I can differentiate them. So let's do this quickly. Let's see if we say create empty here. Where is it? Where is it? Create empty here. And we have like one involve action that says load level. Then we say in invoke lord level then we say this invoke lord level should be put inside here and then we have here somewhere missing yes and this will be here and then we see it yeah that's actually a lot better like let me just quickly go through this and do this again and um, so we have invoke load level and we have this this is change manipulator size so we do create empty yeah, like I said, I'm not that experienced, also not with um, Unity. Manipulator size, manipulator size. And so, if I'm um, if I'm not sure how to do stuff sometimes, I will just um, um, delay it for later. But I really like the way I'm I'm thinking about this right now because this will help me see 
what is what. It will even clean up the the mess I have here a little bit, which is um, it's just a, a little bit too many components for my taste. So at least too many to see easily what's going on. And like this, like I know it just has um, it basically just has the um, empty game object with the component, so it's not that great. But I actually like it because I can see what's going on. It's also like I have it here already to be able to reuse it. So it's easier to reuse because of how Unity works. It's better to make um, sub um, game objects. I'm not sure if it's um, really a problem because of the moving around, but I don't think it should be because like it's all moving relative and there's nothing like there's no render or stuff in there. I don't know if I could just remove the transform. Can I do this? No, I cannot. So yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, let's do the last one, which is, oh, no, that's already it, right? Yeah, that's already it. So we have already everything in here. So let's f apply this quickly. So we will see it now um, a lot better what's going on here. And I probably should also do the Lord level than in the uh, in the manipulator size also which is still here but I will do that later you you, know, you don't need to to see this I just wanted to change it um, quickly so it's easier to see what's going on so we see here we invoke the log Lord level we trigger the disable mono behavior so like I cheated with the with the object name. So in this case, the, in this case, the object name says what's going on in the invoke actions, and here you just see that it's a component under the dying component. But it's still a lot better than what I had before. It's a lot cleaner and better to read. So we disable a mono behavior here, which I can check here. What is disabled? It's the explosion, which is not disabled. It is enabled. I should also rename this because I have added the flag here later. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I can disable or enable game objects in, with this um, action. So I will enable the explosion, which means the, the explosion, I can show you this. This is somewhere here. Let's see if we can see this. I think we should be able to see. If I enable the explosion, yeah, you see, that's what's going to happen. It's will doing it just one time. You know this as the um, dying. This is basically the dying animation, or it's a particle effect. So it's the dying particle effect. Um, so we will start the dying particle effect. At the same time, we will change the manipulator size. What's that? So changing the manipulator size is done here. What I'm doing there is basically, if you die, you will um, there will be, there will be a force that is pushing all the particles away um, to um, get the desired effect of an explosion and everything is flying around and stuff. And so what I'm doing here is I'm changing the global manipulator. Like that's a particle playground two thing. You have basically manipulators where you can say uh, um, add forces to, um, to an object or gravitate towards it or um, what is it called in the... Uh, wait, I can tell you in the <laughs> global manipulators repellent that's what it's called so there's a repellent or an attractor and basically it will move a particles away like you have here a strength a smoothing effect distance effect like how is it affected ov over the distant particle lifetime strength you can you can also say um, um, subtract lifetime I think or is it only on collision inverse bounds no it's not here Anyway, but you can do a couple of things. Basically, changing the um, changing the behavior. You have also a what is it called property. So you can just change some properties, um, which can also result into attractor or repellent. But yeah. So um, basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking the first one, or is it the first one? New size, time in seconds, delta, manipulator index. Yes, it's zero. So I'm taking the the first one which should be the repellent one yes it's the repellent one and I'm increasing the size over a certain amount of time with which I'm basically lerping so this is a little bit more complex behavior Ooh, what's going on here I didn't want it I wanted to have this so um, so you can see here what I'm doing is um, once it's executing 
I'm saying invoke this method repeatedly over the delta time, which I have here, which is 0 0.05 seconds. And I have a ratio change, which means how much should it change each time this is called. So we see here the ratio is increased. So we start at 0, then 0 0.1, or at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so, so on. Each 0.05 seconds this is called and increased and the manipulator size is changed according with this is mass f lerp this is a unity function as soon as we are approximately at the same size we will stop why is it approximately because we are working here with float values and float values may have uh, you cannot basically you cannot compare float values for equality you need to always have a little bit of um, discre discrepancy, like <coughs> a float value of 4.954 might be at some point 9, 9.5.5.4 <laughs> or something like that. And so a float value can change. This is due to some um, some lower level hardware stuff. You just need to know that if you are um, comparing float values, Unity has a really handy function, which is mass f approximately, which will always return true if it's like almost correct. Like it's it's fine. You can even change the epsilon, which is basically the um, allowed, yeah, here, and um, which is basically the allowed, um, oh, it's read only. I, I think you can change it in the editor or something like, but this is basically how much different the value um, can be to the other value so but just use this I think if you just use this unless you have some really um, edgy corner cases then you will be fine so um, if it's almost the same or for the sake of discussion I say if it's the same cancel the change size invoke which means this will no longer be called and this executing is also set to false which is important because if we call this multiple times before the execution is finished, it will just ignore it. Why did I do this? Because it will get really messy and really complicated if um, we change the size and then we change the size again and again and again. And like it's how do you get back? And everything is a little bit more complicated then. And so I decided I will only need this to run through once. And once it's run through, I can do other stuff. But for now, I just want it to run through and not do anything else. I can still cancel it um, at any point, but that's another thing because, um, no, I cannot cancel it here anyway. But in theory, I could um, provide a method to stop it. But I, like I said, I don't really need it. So let's go back to Unity. Um, so the next thing we do is um, changing the manipulator size. By the way, if the invoke stuff, I did forget to mention it also has a time in seconds because currently like I, I don't have a queue or like an event based system where basically one component says oh now I'm finished now you can execute some other stuff so I, I know it's not the best thing but like for me right now it's it's good enough I'm basically timing this because like most of the stuff I'm doing like if you look at dying here Yes, it is. It would be better to have the sound play perfectly to the exact right spot I want to, or to change the manipulator size at the perf perfect millisecond, always at the same point, so that it's always looking exactly the same. But the thing is, first of all, the particular effect always looks different anyway, so you might not even really notice it. And <coughs> I, I don't really need it. It's not that bad if the, if sometimes the particles are, are overlapping a little bit of some of these like it's actually a little bit logical even like um, so if we look at the at the effect I'm talking about I hope I'm not crashing here because that sometimes happens so I just want to yes see so I don't know if you saw that but um, what what happened is the particle effect, the explosion effect, comes and at the same time all the particles are pushed away. So, or not at the, 
basically even not ex exactly at the same time because it looked a little bit weird when i first did it the problem was that i changed the manipulator size over time and i want to invoke some other stuff um, also after some time so this the load level for example here is called 1.8 seconds after the everything started like it's not really important if it's 1.8 or 1.5 or 1.4 like I left a little bit of time at the end so that the entire explosion is shown, you see some other stuff and for now you're always getting back to the start of the level which is exactly the behavior I want to. Um, but it's not really important, like the timing here is not, not a real issue, I, you just need to leave a little bit of a puffer basically so that you always will see the entire um, effect. The same goes for change manipulator size which is invoked in 0 0.2 seconds, this is just due to the fact if I started directly, it looked a little bit weird. The explosion itself needs a little bit of time to, to get out. And then I can change the manipulator size and throw all the, um, what are they called? Um, whatever, the, the obstacles, the um, rectangular things to, to just move them away. Yes. So um, what else are we doing? Um, we are disabling the background and sprite renderer. This is because um, if we let it, um, if we let the sprite renderer inside, like the sprite renderer is basically in here somewhere. I don't know where is it. I don't see it. Well, ah, it's not in here, and that's why. Uh, background here, background and and whatever. I don't see it right now point background and point i don't point really that's not a nice name anyway um i'm i'm having these two sprites and it, once the explosion starts it's important that the uh, that these two are gone because it would look really weird if you because what i want to achieve is i want to have an explosion where it looks like the the player object the player point is blowing up and exploding and moving everything away and like I cannot have the green point staying static in the middle so that's why I'm disabling this um, what else am I doing yeah I'm um, changing the rigid body to kinematic and um, this is because like at the beginning when I died I had problems um, I had problems um, that the camera because the camera is still moving uh, it's still following the player and um, even when I disabled the sprite renderer, the player was still falling. So um, because I did not um, do anything else, that's why I'm changing the um, rigid body to kinematic, which means it doesn't move anymore. It will just stand static, and that's exactly what I want. Because after, uh, once I die, the explosion, the camera should not move anymore. So the next, the last thing I'm doing is playing an audio clip, which is the the one you just heard before. Um, I have here um, a play audio clip script, which also has the audio clip attached to it. I can also play the audio source itself. I don't know, like th there are some benefits for this, but it's not really important. So, but as you can see here, for from just what this one trigger, we are able to execute all these different actions over time in different orders and stuff. So at the end, we get the desired effect. Like the really cool thing about this is like I can use the play audio, for example, I'm using uh, also when dying and uh, not when dying, when finishing the level here, you see, there's a bunch of play audio clips. So I did not need to code anything new. I just say, oh, I want to um, play an audio clip. So I drag this in, say which kind of audio clip I want, which audio source. And in this case, I'm even playing the audio source and here also. Um, I also have to change manipulator size for a couple of times because I can select the index here. Uh, here, I mean, I can even um, use different ones in the, when you finish the level, you first pull in all the stuff and then you explode again. So I'm using the manipulator size of zero, uh, the, ma the repellent manipulator again, and the, um, and the attractor manipulator to get um, to get to this effect. Um, yes, so as you can see with just a very little code in the end, 
I'm able to combine these different code snippets to um, to get the desired effects I want. And that's basically what I wanted to talk about. And that's also kind of what, like, I hope I'm not really screwing up and I get a lot of bunch, uh, a bunch of hate, um, hate emails or Twitter <laughs> stuff. Um, this is what entity component is all about. You are supposed to um, put different components together and from combining different components, you can um, then generate easily and quickly new behaviors. Like um, for, for example, if you think about um, enemies, enemy behaviors, like a lot of enemies in your game might have to shoot. So you want to be able to reuse the shooting script. You also want to be able to reuse the walking stuff. And like even, even walking, you can even go further than that. Like you, you as a player and also your enemies need to be walking. Like walking in the sense of just going from one place to another. So if you split out the script that is just moving you from one place to another, and then the input, which is basically the trigger again, you split the input um, out again as well, you actually have um, have a lot better way of um, changing uh, or reusing your, your script because um, then you basically both use the same walking um, the same walking script to walk around, but o the only difference is in the AI. The AI is um, is um, doing all the calculation and saying like where to go and where not to go. And in the other case, you are deciding that via your gamepad or keyboard or whatever, however your favorite input method is. That is the next good thing. You can change the um, input method, and that's also what I think I'm. What I said before at the beginning. Uh, where I have some problems here. The, the input stuff, it's not really like it's supposed to be. I I will need to change that a little bit to get it a li uh, working a little bit better. Yeah, but I think basically that's it for today. I hope you still enjoyed this. I know, like, I, I would love to have um, more progress um, than I had right now. But l like I said, like, what can I do? I... I just I just didn't um, have time. After this podcast is uploaded and everything, I will start working again a little bit. But like I said, it's still Christmas and holiday and everything. So I have to see how much um, work I will be able to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I think um, next time... Yeah, okay. So next time I hope I will have implemented some of the stuff we um, I talked about last week um, with... Uh, um, with the different behaviors, I'm also currently thinking about um, getting how to basically get some really different. So basically, I want to have something that that makes me really stand out. Um, also as a um, basically as a game mechanic. So I'm still searching for another game mechanic that's really setting me apart from all the from all the rest, and that might also change some of the levels you already see some of the obstacles like i have some bugs with obstacles as well so um i will need to think about all that stuff and get back to to you anyway so i hope next week i will be able to show you a little bit more maybe show you some mechanics i played around with stuff like that if i'm or the next time i'm i'm not really able to give you a great progress report maybe it's a little bit more than today but still not really enough for an entire podcast i i will probably talk about game design a little bit more i think um i have some some interesting thoughts for you on what i need to do how i need to do it and yeah but that's the topic for another time when i'm run out of stuff to talk to you about Anyway, I hope you had a nice time and enjoy the rest of your holidays. Um, have a nice week and Happy New Year because I will not do a podcast um, before the New Year. So, Happy New Year, nice holidays, goodbye.